Okay. Yeah, do you guys remember when uh, Lightning, Thompson Lightning was here and they talked about Lightning? They gave you a couple of rules. So this chapter really, I want you guys to read it for a few things. Number one, to pick up the design criteria, Thompson Lightning gave you guys a package. All of you guys got the package that we got from them. And they have more than what you need to design um, this package, guys. Make sure you have this one. You have more than what you need to design your system. More than what you need to design your system. So this chapter, just quickly um, talk about um, a few things from the Lightning. So describing lightning process, the guy did, I think they will do, did a, go, a better job than me describing the whole lightning process. Lightning is a discharge. It's a charge. It's not a current. It's a charge. Like if you guys remember the presentation, identify requirement for protecting the building. So the most important thing is this one. That's what, what you guys are going to be doing for me. Uh, requirement for protecting the building. He talked about this big ball, remember, rolling over the building and so forth. We're not going to get into the details. We'll tell you how to put your spikes, how to connect your spikes, how to connect them to the ground, and what the criteria for placing them. And then uh, safety rules for lightning. This is FYI only uh, for the public. What do you need to do? know about lightning. Okay, so a few things, guys. This is basically literature. Lightning is a natural phenomenon, necessary. There's a whole lot, a lot of things. What we care about is it's, it could be destructive and fatal experience. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, and this is kind of science, there's a lot of, of I, I know stories, guys, of building being hit and burn the whole electrical and or their uh, electrical, mechanical, and as well as low voltage system. So that's why we call specific precaution needed to be taken as an individual when there's lightning, as well as if you design a building, you have to put your spikes on it. Need to understand the theory of atomic structure. So we get, we, this is a few things about the atomic structure and what happened. Uh, how does lightning start? The atomic structure uh, to appreciate the need for lightning protection. So let's go directly into the atom. You guys remember that when you went with Mr. Ryman? So the atom, um, the matter, every matter, including your nose, my friend Jamie, and my nose here, is made of atom, atom right? Uh, the nucleus, so here's your atom, here's the nucleus right in the middle of it. That may be the center of the atom and has the protons and the neutrons. You guys remember that? And then right in these orbits, you have the electrons orbiting them. You guys remember that? That's the theory of electronic theory. <coughs> protons in the center, making the nucleus. Electrons orbiting the your your protons right here, um, or the nucleus. Uh, protons and neutrons in, and electrons orbiting them. Uh, surrounded by number of electrons. And that will decide how many electrons they have, decided if it's negative charge um, or positive charge, depending how many, are they going to lose one electron or gain one electron. So that's where I'm going to go um, in terms of, so there's the uh, protons and neutrons right in the center, electrons are orbiting them. Do you guys remember that from the old days? Why do we care about this? Because you're going to see it's a discharge. Lightning is a discharge. Okay, so um, what happens if you dislodge one of these electrons, the atom becomes ionized and becomes negatively charged. If you add an electron to um, an atom, it becomes positively, if, if, you, if it loses an electron, it becomes positively charged. If it's added an electron, it becomes negatively charged. So part of ion atoms that loses, so it becomes positive if it loses an electron, um, has a net positive charges, it becomes negative if it gains an electron, right? So, and how do they do that, guys? It forces, there's force that goes into the electron, the orbits, and pushes the electron out of orbit. Um, that makes the, that makes the charge either positively charged object or negative charged object, based on the number of electrons um, in the lost orbits. Okay, ionization. That's, um, I'm just going to run through that one. Remove electrons from the atom, that's called ionization. Every time you remove one electron from, here's my electrons orbiting here, you take this one, push it out of orbit, uh, you ionize, you ionize um, the atom, it becomes positively charged in this case, um, and transfer the power from place to place, it makes it possible to store, when you ionize it, it makes it possible to store electrical power and transfer the power from place to place. 
So that's when you get into the few positively and few discharged, this negatively charged and positively charged. So who's here? We're, we're moving towards, guys, into the discharge. Um, unlike charges, I don't know, I'm going to make a few here. Here's a charge here positive. Here's a charge here negative. And there is a law. We, did, we spend a lot of time, guys, talking about this law. There is a force, guys, that affects these. And this force is, this is the distance. This force, did you guys study this one when you went basic? The force that affects two charges. If there's an object positively charged, a positive charge, a negative charge, there is a force that draws them to each other. And that force is, it is directly proportional to the charges, the value of the charge, and inversely proportional to the distance between them. Meaning the closer they are, the more the force pulls them together or away from each other, depending on their charge. And, and the bigger the charge is, the stronger these objects can attract to each other. So, so you get familiar with this one from the magnets. Un, if you have unlike charges attract, um, like charges rebuild each other. And the attraction force, therefore, directly proportional to the square of the distance between them. Directly proportional to the square of distance. Meaning the further away from each other, the less force between them. Imagine putting two magnets. You guys remember when you move the magnets away, they don't pull each other you know, or push each other as much. You put them closer to each other, bam, they slam into each other. Same thing, it's like magnets. There's a, a quantity that measure the charge, guys, it's called column. And this is what you're gonna do, um, Andrew, this weekend when you go to the bar. Uh, it's called the quantity of charges that place one, <clears throat> if you place it one meter uh, from uh, a light charge, like the, uh, right here, here's a charge and here's another charge. If you put one meter here, one meter, like 3.33 feet, put them away. The force that will attract, this is repel them away from each other. The force that repel them away from each other is equal to Mr. Newton, 9 times 10 to the power 9 Newton. I laugh about this, guys. When I was in college, we spent in basic electricity studying Newton law and the charges and all this stuff. We spent at least one semester in fundamentals, analyzing that force that affects all these charges between them. So for us here, we really care that they call the column is the quantity of charge, <clears throat> the Q, uh, that if you place them one meter away from each other, the force that you, it will be exerted on them is nine times 10 to the power of nine. If we teach uh, basic electricity, we go a little bit more, but we're not into basic electricity. Then <clears throat> they move into joules, the work, the energy released <clears throat> from the charges discharged uh, by the force of one Newton over one meter. So the amount of energy, <clears throat> if a charge moves one meter and has one, a force of one Newton, that will give you one joule, which energy, that work. That makes sense. The volt, volt is a big deal, guys. The potential energy charge <clears throat> here, when one joule of work is done in one on one column of charges so again if we were doing basic electricity i'll go deeper and deeper in this one guys and so the relationship between the voltage the work and the force is a whole big big relationship for the time being you guys are interested into the, why do we care about charges because lightning is nothing but charges right discharge you have a positively charged cloud that that uh, drain all its energy through the earth that's negatively charged or vice versa. Okay, here's a couple of things we have located at, so how do you say this word? Ionos ionosphere. ionosphere, thank you. Ionosphere is one of the, um, uh, what do you call it, the layers of the, of surrounding the earth, and that located at 40 miles away, and it's always, uh, so the above the earth, the, and uh, where the atmosphere contain more ions, so that will be kind of supposedly positively charged ions there. And the Earth has a surplus of electrons, so we are negatively charged. You can look at it. And here's the amount of electron that we have compared to the I, um, negative with respect to, with respect to all the ionosphere. So who cares? Um, here's what you're looking at. You're looking at this layer here, which is 40 miles away from Mother Earth, positively charged. And you're looking at Mother Earth, which is negatively charged, compared to that. So we have positively charged 
two places, one positive, one negative, you're almost creating what? A capacitor. And every time there is a, a, ch a chance of discharge, an easy path, uh, that energy that's going to go from the positive directly to the negative. Any comments, guys, about this? So we have positively charged layer of the earth, negatively charged earth. You have energy stored, and that energy need, uh, a the minute they give it a path, and it goes right and hits you through a lightning. That's as far as I want to say. Here's a, a good example. So we have a positively charged layer here that 40 miles away from the earth. It attracts the positive too. There's a cloud. Can you see it attracts the positive here? Um, and then as the positive move away from this cloud, what do they create? Negative here. And then the earth, the earth puts positive in this area, becomes positively charged. Now the negatively charged cloud, when it has an easy path to the ground, it hits uh, whose house is this? Zach? Gary. Zach, Gary. <laughs> when, when you have a negatively charged cloud and a positively charged earth, or vice versa, um, the energy will, when, it, when it's given um, an easy path, that energy will, will charge directly, uh, attract all these energy, and the negatively charged cloud will go directly to the earth as a lightning. Is that good enough explanation about lightning? <laughs> so the the energy stored in the cloud negatively charged ground find its way through the least resistance and go hit the ground. So you get uh, you get yourself a what do you get? You get yourself lightning. They say that guys, 260 volts because of the whole charges. The Earth is 260 volts radiant. So as you walk, <clears throat> there's always a 260 volt between your legs. When, when the earth is charged this way, uh, luckily it doesn't discharge. Okay, then you get into the thunder cloud, so-called thunder cloud. So, um, so it generated, okay, more charges on the lower portion of the cloud, like we said, is negatively charged. Uh, with respect to the upper portion, we looked at this one, and to the earth, so you go, so here's what lightning is. Struck between, you can do have a cloud between two clouds, uh, cloud or between uh, thunder cloud and mother earth so you have this energy like we said you can have uh, you can have lightning going from cloud to cloud or you can have lightning going from earth to uh, to cloud or cloud to earth uh, depends on how high the potential difference become and the impedance between them how high the potential the voltage between them as well as the impedance of the zone any comments guys so positively charged cloud discharging in a negatively charged earth uh, or negatively charged cloud discharging in the positively charger is what they're looking at. Here's your three. Um, so that whole energy stored in this cloud as negative energy, right? It's going to come or uh, in the negatively charged cloud when it has its own easy path to the ground. It's going to discharge through mother earth. That's all what we care about. Any comment about the science? That's your science class today. Let's do other design, right? So. Um, so lightning strikes, a couple of statistics here. <clears throat> Don't be one of those kills, killed. How many people in the US, 150, injured, 250, um, injured, another 250 every year from the National Center for Health Statistics. Here's how much damage. You guys remember the presentation that lightning guys did, $250,000, that's what we're concerned about. Protection of the people and protection of the properties from lightning. How does lightning work and discharge is, is like I said, uh, well, I would love to see compared to this one how many people get killed by drunken drivers in the U.S. compared to two values. That reminds me, Jeff, my friend, and Aaron is uh, the GFCI protection when we do statistics. They give you that many people got killed because there's no GFCI protection. Well, can we put the number of people who got killed because of other crimes, gangs, so you can put things in perspective? But remember, we're the engineers. We are... Uh, we can't control the gangs because we're not cops. What can we control? We can control the design of the building to make it safe. Okay, goal is uh, lightning protection. Provide, so here's your goal, to provide the lightning protection for your building. What does the lightning protection mean? If there is to be a discharge between that negatively cloud and that positively uh, building like Dunwoody, you want that discharge to be controlled. That's only what you can do. You can, how do you control the discharge? Here's my cloud, here's my spike at the top of the building. 
you provide the easiest path to the ground through your spike instead of through the building itself. So that whole energy supposedly comes into the spike, suck it down into Mother Earth, and does the least uh, damage to your building. That's the only thing you can dream of. Any comments, guys, any questions? Provide loading events path through the ground, and also multiple paths, not only load, multiple paths to the ground. So that energy will disappear uh, in a controlled fashion. Any comments, guys, any questions? You have big, huge current as a DC current coming and hitting the, the building. Instead of randomly hitting wherever it wants, we can direct that hit by having spikes. So we say, hey, if you want to discharge, why don't you come and discharge through the spike here? That's as far as I can tell you. <laughs> any comments, guys, about this? Am I the only one who's excited here about lightning? Yeah. You guys are going to be designing it. OK, master label. Um, uh, do you guys remember Levi when he was here? He talked about uh, master label. In order to qualify for insurance, it has to be labeled as a master label. So their inspectors, I believe ocean inspectors, they can go and um, inspect your building and give you that master label. Lightning protection system installation <clears throat> um, should be guided by the requirements of master label cert. That's when the insurance acknowledge that you are protected. Endorsed by the UL. Um, and or by Lightning Protection Institute. You guys have tons of information about Lightning Protection Institute right in front of you. Uh, Lightning Protection Institute here for more reading tonight, this weekend. You guys will, will read that, that book. Um, advocated, uh, okay, advocated system provide low impedance. So the whole idea is low impedance to path to, um, for the stroke to flow through the earth while minimizing the damage. If you want to highlight this one, that's the reason why we have lightning protection. If are we to get hit, we need to provide the least amount of resistance to the ground so the whole energy hits the ground, get dissipated, Brian, instead of hitting your hair and burning it. Make sense? No? Yes? <laughs> so what's the goal of the lightning? Lightning is providing at least <clears throat> low impedance hit to the ground. Okay, now we're in the design. Now you guys will wake up. When you design a lightning system, there are three components I want you guys to do for our building. Component number one, <clears throat> this will be <clears throat> air terminal. A few things about, and then uh, the second one is conductor, and the third one is ground. Okay, so for the air terminals, guys, they have to be minimum 12 inches, 12 inches uh, high, uh, less than 20 feet on center. If you guys want to write yourself, 12 inches high above the object. Um, 20 feet on center when you place this. Conductor, I have a size for the conductor that I would like you guys to use. There's a recommendation for the size. If you are using a cross-section area of say, oh, cover, 59K for conductor, 59K CM, CU, or if you're using aluminum, you're going to use 98, 98.5K CM AL. So that's your conductor. I want you guys to write this one, Jeff, on your design. So when you put your detailed line, guys, I would like you to say, pick, uh, keynote it, and say the conductor will be, let's use cover, 59 KCMCU. That's a note I would like to, to see on your, uh, your drawing. Cool? And I also would like to see a note that says the spike, that spike uh, here is going to be 12 inches. <clears throat> 12 inch, inches. Cool? Any questions about these? These are your design criteria. For the building, a uh, grounding connection, <clears throat> a grounding connection that is the whole building that we have. We're going to provide a grounding connection at the every, almost every corner, so it will take the spikes all the way. Grounding connection, um, and we're going to have um, um, at least 10 foot, <clears throat> three quarter of an inch uh, ground rod. Can you guys see that? On every corner of the building, we're going to have a ground rod and a, a wire. And you see how they, and here's your spike. That's how we're going to design the building, by the way. That's how your building is going to be designed, most likely. Can you guys see that? These are my spikes. <clears throat> and then you connect all these together. That's your design. And, and in the middle, they usually put one 50 feet on the middle and you tie it like this, done deal. Here's the design of your lightning system. Air terminals, lightning conductors, ground connections. Any comments, any questions? That's what you guys will be doing with your friend Chad.
Any comments, any questions about that? Andrew, my friend, makes sense? So, air terminals, yeah, air terminals, uh, high, 12 inches, 20 feet in between them as you space them from here to here, 20 feet. I will talk about these one in a second. So that's basically what you're looking at the design for our building. Mechanical equipment, we have a rooftop units jack. We're going to put two spikes on the rooftop unit. We'll see when we when we get that one. Okay. Any question, guys, about the prote building protection? That's really the bottom of that chapter. These are the three things. Okay. So we talk about the air terminals. Must the uh, the highest element of the lighting protection? That's when the lighting is going to hit, right by the air terminals, right here, right? Uh, solid. So you guys have seen them. Are the solid tubular rods made of copper or aluminum? I brought my, we brought the other day multiple of them. They were here. Uh, usually sharp pointed, also they're safety available for, for safety for both area. Attract lightning does not prevent it. Attract lightning does not prevent it. It really doesn't really attract lightning. If lightning is to happen, it doesn't prevent the lightning from happening. It allows the lightning to dissipate in a safe manner. Does that make sense? So if the lightning is to happen in that building, it will control the discharge in a way that will not damage the equipment or kill the people. That's what lighting is all about. So these are your air terminal. Um, here's how you place them. You're going to place them, the height has to be between two of these values, guys. Um, 10 inches um, or not or more, not more than 36 inches. So I would like you guys to use 12 inch terminal. So the, the it, it has to extend 10 up to 36 inches, but we're going to use 10 10 inch terminal. Do you place them at bridges and on the roofs, at the edge of the roof, right? And you place them every 20 feet and two feet, not closer, within two feet of the edge. So if here's my uh, edge, guys, you're gonna place, if you put my terminal right here, you have to place it within two feet. And and what here's my other terminal, right? And then in between them, how many feet between them? 20 feet. And from the edge, you can't push them back more than two feet. So when we go to Allianz next week, they place them very close in, indoor, but closer to the edge within two feet. Sometimes they sit them back, guys, right here, if the building is right here, so they don't show up and be ugly. Okay, any comments, any questions about lightning placement? Everybody got lightning placement? You guys are going to put them. We have a family for Revit, and all what you have to do, drop them and detail line them. In the middle of a building, guys, every 50 feet. So if your building is 100 feet by 100 feet, in the middle of it, you have to put one spike, too. <clears throat> so in the middle of a building, here's, uh, here's my building. So right here, um, not to exceed, at least level 50 feet. And from here to here, 50 feet, 50 feet, right in the middle of the building. From here to here, 50 feet, from here to here, 50 feet, from here to here, 50 feet. Did you guys see that? Right in the middle of the building, 50 feet. <clears throat> you have to put them. Parameter, you always put them at the parameter. Parameter is 20 feet. Middle of the building, 50 feet. Did you guys, everybody can see that? So here's my lightning arresters right here. Our building that we have right now, guys, is going to have at least two or three in the middle of that building. Okay, when projected. So if you have, uh, we have chimneys and all the stuff you place, of course, at the highest location in the middle of, uh, of the building. Okay, so moving into, um, we got that. We got that one. Here's what we're looking at, guys. This is your spike. They're going to have 12 inches high. Look at the safety. Speared versus um, rounded over here for safety. Everybody knows you don't want to be speared with one of these, right? And... When our lightning protection guy came, guys, you saw the <clears throat> the one that actually has a spring in it that bends. So if you are to fall on it, it doesn't spear you. It will bend. So there are a few safety rules. Lightning conductor. <clears throat> so all these have to be connected with a lightning conductor. Connect the, uh, so it interconnect between all of them and connecting to the air, all the terminals, uh, metal parts. Everything has to be connected with this lightning made of copper aluminum. <clears throat> so as you put your building right here, my friend, and you so you're gonna go connect all these together, bam, 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 and you're gonna take multiple paths to the ground, multiple 
path to the drone. That's your lightning conductor, specially designed lightning conductor that can handle a lot of energy. Did you guys have a chance when we, when the speaker was here to look at that lightning? It looks like any other conductor, bare conductor, copper aluminum, but specially designed to handle the energy that's coming out of lightning. So that's a second component, grounding. Um, so made with rods driven into the earth, typical, okay. three quarter by um, a foot, at least two feet from the protection object so that the rod top is a foot under the ground. So right by the building, two feet from the building, you drive it and, and you put typically eight to 10 feet rods made um, underground metal pipe. You can also use underground metal pipe casing as your grounding electrode. And the most important thing is here. What do you do, uh, Darren, my friend, with the electrodes that come into the electrical utilities? You interconnect your grounding electrode system for the horn and the electrical with your grounding electrode system for the lighting. Interconnect them. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? So the grounding electrode system that we're going to be designing next week, no, the week after, for our building, uh, and the lightning electrode system, basically ground rods, all will be interconnected with typically number, at least number uh, number six, at least number six conductor. Okay, safety rules. A couple of safety rules, guys, you can read on your uh, on your own. Uh, lightning carry no electrical charge. And a couple of, this is just a regular safety rule. No charges of somebody get hit by lightning, unlike electrical, when you're electrocuted, you are charged. And you could kill somebody, somebody to hold you when you are when you're in the circuit. Charges hit you and they go. It's a momentary thing. So if somebody's charged, you can go pick him up and take him to the to the hospital. Um, person start to be killed. Usually they they might be in a coma. So if they look like they're killed, you could bring him back with CPR. So they might appear like they're killed and dead. You could revive them and bring him back with CPR because of the effect of lightning. Okay, so that's basically all what I want guys want you to know about lightning. I know we had a speaker too. There's a couple of recommendations what to do when there's lightning. For example, right in the middle of a lake when you're ice fishing, if there's a lightning, what do you do? You stand there at the highest object, right? Is that what you do? Or you get the heck out of there. We all know that. You know, if there's lightning, you always tell your kids, get inside, don't get hit by lightning. So there's a couple of safety rules. You guys will read this in your own. Any comments, any questions about like any comments, any questions? So that's basically what um, what I wanted to show you. Really the rules, nothing other than the rules. Um, okay, we don't want to do that. Any comments, guys, any questions? So why don't you guys get to give me five minutes here and then I'm going to flip uh, to a different topic and then we'll show you how to do the lightning. Okay. 